Hi there, my name is Sam, and in this tutorial, we're rebuilding the waitlist page of Blake Lively's new D2C brand. This is the live Shopify page, and this is what I've just rebuilt with an instant, without code and in a matter of minutes. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is add two rows to the blank canvas. Then let's delete the gap that exists between these two rows from 32 to zero. And then we will set the height of this row to view and then the value 100. And we do this to make sure that on whatever device someone lands on this page, it will fill up all the space that is available. It will fill up the entire viewport. Then we will add a video or a background video to the top row. So we go to fill, then to video, and then we paste in our link from our Shopify store. Then we change the height of this top row from 1FR to 2FR, basically saying that it will now occupy twice the amount of space as the other row, which is set to 1FR. Then on top of this background video, let's add the logo. Here it is, we drag it in. We add some inside spacing to create some space between the outer edges of the canvas and then where the content starts. So let's go to inside spacing of this row and we add 40 to the top and bottom and 40 to the left and right. Then we distribute from the center so the logo is nice in the center. It's a bit large right now so let's change the fixed width of 500 to 300. And there we have it. This top row is looking really, really good. Then for this bottom row, let's change the background color from this fill color to this branded color, the beige color. There we have it. And then within this bottom row, we drag in two different columns. This column on the left will hold the header text element and this column on the right will hold the form. Right now, the row is set to fit. Let's change it to fill so it will occupy all the space that is available. Then within this row, let's drag and drop our header text element. As you can see, there's no space between the outer edges of the row and where the content starts. So let's again add some inside spacing, 40 to the top and bottom and 40 to the left and right. Then this should say something new is coming. Now let's make sure that it has the right color, which is this branded color right here and the correct font, which is this font, a custom font I've uploaded to instant. And then we can set the size to 80 and there we have it. Last thing I want to do is delete the fill color of the row that holds the text. For this row on the right, we will have some text element and then later on we can embed a form. We have connections with Klaviyo and Omnisend out of the box so you can easily embed forms within Instant. First of all, let's copy this text element and duplicate it within this row. Of course, this is a little bit too big and this should say something else. This should say sign up and enjoy 10% off when we launch. Then we can set the size of this text element to 28. There we have it. Let's also delete the fill color and then also add some inside spacing. 40 to the top and bottom, 40 to the left and right. For this entire row, I want to align all the text elements to the right. So let's go to align and click on align from the right. Then we have another text element which will be placed underneath the form this is just some small text, so let's copy and paste that in. There it is, and now let's make sure this is a bit smaller. 16 should do the trick, and then we align the text also from the right. Later on, we will embed a form, but for now, let's take a look at the responsiveness. So this is looking really, really good. Let's go to the laptop viewport. And this is where it starts to look a little bit weird. This text is way too big. So let's change this to 66. Now it fits again. Then when it comes to these text elements, let's make it a bit smaller. I would say 24 and this could be size 12. 
there we have it on the iPad viewport it starts to look a little bit weird so for this entire column on the bottom the direction is set to horizontal meaning this row on the left and the row on the right are placed next to each other but we don't have a lot of space for this so I'm going to change the direction to vertical so these rows are now placed on top of each other and there we have it the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that this background video doesn't hold that much space on this device so let's change the height from 2fr to 1.2 there we have it then this header text element is of course a little bit large let's change this to 50 then make sure it's aligned from the center and then also right here then we will do something else and that is make sure that this content is aligned from the center right now this other text element is set to a max width of 100 percent so it will fill up all the space that is available i don't want this to happen so let's change it to 75 percent and now it will occupy only 75 percent of the space available let's align it from the center on this device and then of course as we know from the desktop viewport, there is a gap in between these rows set to 32. Let's change this to zero. And then let's also change the inside spacing settings from 40 to 20. Change the height from fill to fit. There it is. And do the same thing right here, 20. So this looks way, way better on the iPad viewport. Next up, let's go to mobile. And here we also need to make some changes. This header text is quite large. Let's change it to 40. Then let's align this from the center and change the size to 20. And then the rest looks quite good. Now let's preview. This is looking really, really good on the mobile viewport. On the iPad viewport as well, of course, there's no form yet. Then we have the laptop viewport, this is looking great, and the tablet viewport. This all looks really, really good. To embed a form, we can go back to the desktop viewport, and then under embed, we can drag and drop the form element onto the canvas. When it's drag and dropped onto the canvas, there is a new option right here, and that is select from a app. Then you can connect either Klaviyo or OmniSend. And when you've set up a form within one of these two platforms, you can then select the correct form to work with. And that's it for this tutorial. So I hope you have a good understanding on how to create a waitlist page like this with an InSend and all without code. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tutorials.